Hi everybody! I have a really beautiful question and I'm going to share that question with you and I'm going to be channeling Cryon in order to see what his interpretation of an answer is to this question. So the question is, Okay, it says, to the extent that spiritual evolution on Earth is generally seen as a necessarily luminous evolution, do you think it may also be necessary to explore and accept the much darker aspects of one's own divinity? So, spiritual evolution, right? There's a lot of light involved in this. There's a lot of beauty, a lot of love. But what about the darker aspects of one's own divinity? How do you truly experience ascension if you only want to ascend the angelic side of yourself? If you only want to tap into the love side of creation? The love side of creation is also painful too. And we are the pain and the beauty of all that is, right? So we can't just ascend what feels good. We have to ascend what hurts too. And we need to heal those hurts as best as we can in order to comprehend ourself, in order to comprehend love, right? So I'm going to relax now, get connected with Cryon, and let's see what his message is. Okay. Cryon. He shows me a really long... It's a pathway, it's a tunnel, it's complex. In this tunnel, it's a circular tunnel. I mean, it's a perfect circle. And you walk through and there's a flat section and it, on the outer sides, there's like filing cabinets <laughs> and there's thousands and thousands. It goes forever and ever and ever and ever. And the colors are brown and black and really kind of like a brownish golden color and some off-whites intermixed here. There's a bit of a surreal kind of feeling to it, a bit of the goosebumps, kind of an eerie, creepy feeling, but an acceptance feeling. It's almost like a long forgotten house that you're stepping into. And now you can feel a bit of a haunted experience, but it's also acceptable. The light just came on in here. The light just got bright. <laughs> I'm going to pause this. I'll be right back. The, the light was upon me. The sunlight just came out from behind the clouds. It just blinded the living daylights out of me. Okay, so let me get back in here. I really like where this is going, I'm telling you. It feels deep and meaningful and ancient, old, wise. A little bit of resistance though, and a little bit of curiosity. Okay. Okay, Cryon asked me to pick one of these filing cabinets, just to open it up and to see what is inside. <sighs> I immediately know which one I want to pick, but for some reason I, I pick this one, but I also see myself picking this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> I'm like picking so many filing cabinets. It's like I'm picking 20 filing cabinets at all the exact same times. And I only anticipated or only planned on picking one filing cabinet. But then when I pick that one filing cabinet, I'm suddenly opening 20. A lot more than 20 even. And I see that my soul starts to split off into other versions of itself. And everything is taking place quite quickly. All the versions of me are inspecting each filing cabinet individually and having their own individual unique experiences. And it seems like a domino effect that never ends because once this first filing cabinet is chosen, it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. It's like a pinball that never stops um, hitting one side and the other side and the other side is like ricocheting next filing cabinet, next filing cabinet, but it's all happening at the same time. But it all seems to be having like a an original domino that then hits the next domino and on and on and on. But the soul is one, but it becomes many just like this. Oh man, and each unique filing cabinet, it goes on for all eternity. So the one part of me, the initial filing cabinet I chose, 
I, I'm in this and I'm like, wow, whoa. And it's like full of photographs and it literally looks like files and photographs of all different kinds, images, images, images. And it just is longer and longer and longer and longer. And there's never an, an end to this one filing cabinet. But I'm also simultaneously experiencing all the other versions of myself also interpreting their unique filing cabinet that never ends either. And I'm actually a part of all the versions of myself simultaneously in one single moment. I am all of these me's that are experiencing individually their own unique filing cabinet. And it's all coming back to this one like central location, which is the all self, I guess you could say. Uh, Kryon, Kryon has another interpretation for that, but um, <clears throat> maybe we can use, we can explore that conversation another day. Seems a, a little complicated. Okay, let's get back to this image here. Oh, he does want to talk about it. Okay, so the all self. What is that, Abby? What is you, what is it that you mean by the all self? And I say, okay, well, it almost is like you have a heart. And then you have these arteries and veins, and um, there's this, it's all connected. Everything is all connected. And the heart is a sort of central location where all this blood sort of flows through, and then it sends the information back out. It's like a central location. And I feel that the original me that chose the first filing cabinet, um, it's like uh, it started a process but all the me's chose their own unique filing cabinets at the same time, somehow. And all the unique experiences that are all simultaneously happening are all filtering back to the original heart, the original inspiration of the first filing cabinet. But it's all happening at the same time. I mean, it's just way super extraordinary. So the all self, um, it's interesting because is it like a soul? Is it your higher self? Or is it the consciousness of <laughs> consciousness itself, like uh, the inspiration, the spark? I mean, what is that exactly? Um, this is, for starters, my interpretation <laughs> of uh, an answer to that question. Mm. He says it's okay to feel special, and he he's talking to me about how I've developed like quite an extensive awareness where I've become at peace with knowing that I'm not just me, that I'm everybody. Everybody is me. And I am literally everybody. So there's nothing separating me from you or anybody. So it takes away the experience of feeling like a unique individual. I'm no longer a unique individual because I'm everybody. I'm just part of the spark of existence but that spark of existence is literally everybody and as a human being there's a bit of a depression that comes from that <laughs> awareness because it feels like you lose yourself you lose a sense of self which isn't actually true it's just a human mind trying to con process this concept so cryan tells me that that i am special and that it's okay to see myself as a unique oneness as my own one and he tells me that and he gives me a really big hug. And he talks to me about how this awareness alone creates suffering. Just this one awareness alone creates suffering. And he's not necessarily saying that that's sort of like a darker side that you need to resolve in order to accomplish ascension. He's saying though that ascension comes with awareness like this that can create suffering, how do you work through those feelings? How do you work through that? And he says that I need to, I just need to experience this right now. And he gives me a really big hug and he shares that message with me just through energy. And just by allowing me to feel special is the way I experience it. It's very kind. And he takes all the selves and he brings them back to me, to Abby, to the consciousness that um, reached this location and decided on a filing cabinet, which then became many filing cabinets and many versions of myself. And he's bringing all those versions of myself back to me, 
to the one me. And he asked me what that means to me. What does it mean to you, Abby, when you, he, he shows me how I define it as a heart with many sort of like branches, right? Um, the arteries and the veins. Obviously, you can't bring the veins and the arteries into the heart. Um, so we have to look at a different way. But he's, he's talking about bringing the parts of yourself back to the central heart, to the central heartbeat of your own creation. And what does that mean to me? Okay. All right, I'm just going to say it. And it feels very human to say it like this, but I say it feels like reaching a state of completion. As though I, I explored my curiosities, I explored my um, personal needs, and I came full circle with all of those needs. And all that I have collected and discovered on that journey returns along with all the parts of myself, all the parts of my own consciousness. And then what, I start over? I become a new me? Like what happens after that? That's, that's the best I could answer this question right now. He says that it's okay to it's as if um, sometimes we need to see that the work is done. Because if we as human beings see that there, the work is never done, that too creates suffering for the human. So human beings need to have an experience of knowing that the work is done and that they get to feel proud of themselves for completing that effort. And I asked Kryan, so, so when, if I choose to, to kind of, uh, I mean, how far can I go as a human being to comprehend these concepts beyond my own mind? If I just choose to call it that the work is done and just to satisfy myself, to satisfy some need to have the work done? Is that really me honoring a true reality of what is? Or is it me choosing a pathway of self-satisfaction because it's easier that way, because it's simpler that way? He shows me how some people carry way too many burdens, way too many elephants on their back. And the more pebbles of, of struggle or, I mean, he shows me a very large cart and there's another rock put into it, another rock put into it, another rock put into it in order to overcome yourself. How many rocks do you need to carry because the experience of overcoming yourself is also a burden, is also part of ascension, comes with suffering. So how much suffering are you going to put in your box, into your cart, and then actually carry that cart with you? Um, when do you reach a level of saying, I am complete now? I don't need to continue to... What, to challenge myself... I mean, I know it's a weird thing to say, but when do we ever reach a level of completion? When do we ever become at peace with ourselves, just right now, the way that we are? Do we have to just keep becoming better and better and better and better and better? Could we ever reach a level where we just, we're just okay, just like this? And it's purely honest, and it's purely beautiful, and it's purely human, and we're letting all the rocks go from the cart. And now we're just free of the rocks. Because we don't need to add more suffering to the to our backpacks, to our suitcases, to our you know, carts. <laughs> we don't need to add more of that weight into our life. He's saying it's okay to simplify it and feel a warmth from it. 
and we're still on the luminous level of this question, okay? But this is an important thing to talk about when it comes to ascension, because that's part of ascending, is processing some of these new third eye opening awarenesses. And you have an emotional reaction to that. Okay. So he's asking me, he's asking you, he's asking us all. I cannot get away from the light here. <laughs> it's like, it's beaming on me. Okay. He's asking us all to visualize. I mean, it looks like a Tonka truck, okay? It looks like a two-year-old giant truck, though, and you could put rocks in it and, like, push it. <laughs> it could be, like, your little, like, um, red rider. <laughs> it's like a thing like this. So to visualize it in your own way, and it's full of rocks, and these are the little pieces of suffering that you're carrying. And it's okay it's okay to just dump the rocks out. It's okay to reach a level of peace. And he brings it back to what makes me the brightest human being I could be on this journey? What allows me to feel the most beautiful inside and out? And it's not superficial. It's actually, a, I've been trying so hard, right, to access more depth of awareness. But there's something quite, it's almost like I can take a step back and I can sit down and I could take a little vacation <laughs> just to be me, just to be a special soul, just to simplify the ascension process so it doesn't have to be so much of a wisdom effort. <laughs> We're just dumping all the rocks out. He says that those are my some of my personal rocks that I carry because my role is to attain wisdom and then to ex share that wisdom based on what I've discovered. And so that way you can interpret it and process it in your own way. But he shows me there's light workers and you know there's people in all different roles um, that are processing their own versions of rocks. And sometimes he shows me a, a reflection of what would be like a light worker, a healer, um, and the rocks they carry is um, the struggle of, I mean, I just see them like a Reiki healer um, healing somebody and watching this person coming back and coming back. Um, there's some sort of burden in, are they, are they, why aren't they achieving the levels that they are wanting to achieve with this particular client? Um, they're also gaining certain learnings or experiences that are challenging them and uh, kind of uh, making them feel squashed under the pressure of this new learning. It's time to just let the rocks go for a little bit and just step back and come back into a state of simplicity because it'll bring the light back into you. It'll help you feel beautiful again. Don't don't overexert your mind or your emotions or your state of balance. Just take a step back. Dump the rocks out. Just take a step back for a little while and recollect yourself in a more simplistic, humanistic way that is, it's like a comfort experience. And he's showing me this right now. And it seems to be a divine time for a message like this. Like, we need a message like this right now. I'm still trying to get to the darker side. <laughs> but he really just wants to say this. So, <laughs> all right. He shows me the next thing. This is tricky. He won't... He, he talks to me about how we become attached to negativity. And when we become attached to negativity, it's like we, we, we are taken wherever negativity will take us. And we go there and we try to make sense of the negativity. And we become a part of it. And then we just become negativity. And now is that ascension? 
is that learning obviously it's learning but how do we overcome that type of pathway how do we overcome our addiction to negativity our attraction to it our need to comprehend it he says this is a hard one for human beings very hard he shows me that a negative comment or a negative thought or something negative said, feeling negative even, is like a delicious buffet sometimes. And we get so into that buffet, we gorge on the buffet, but it's really just taking us away from a truly healthy, luminescent balance. And what is our attraction to this negativity? Why does the negativity make us feel better about ourselves? Is it true love? Or is it manipulative negativity? And how do we how do we fight back against it? I mean, how do we put the shield up or how do we not succumb to becoming a part of and swimming in the sea of that negative comment or negative interpretation? Um negative experience that now you need to share with all your friends and now they're kind of in the negative experience with you and then it just goes on and on and on and on like a domino effect he says okay so we've dumped all the rocks out right he wants to remind us that right you've dumped the rocks out you're actually returning from all the filing cabinets back to your heartbeat, back to your all self. <laughs> and it's okay to be simple sometimes. It's okay to let go of the rocks and the burdens to come back to yourself. He says, when you choose to come back to yourself, what power do you have when you are all that you are? You've brought all the parts of you back. So now you have a negative interpretation, something negative going on here. He says that you need, this comes with awareness and practice, but the minute that you notice that the energy is starting to change within yourself or within people, you just, you feel it as a calling from the universe or calling from your own higher self or soul or angels or whatever that that just belongs somewhere else that has nothing to do with me the negativity belongs to them the negativity belongs to this experience but I don't have to be in the middle of it I don't have to be saturated in it I can just accept this experience for what it is and now it's not so much negative it's just an opportunity for healing another opportunity for healing another opportunity for healing whether that person needs to work on themselves or this situation needs healing, how much are you going to invest in the healing of something negative that is taking you down with it? This is all about ascension. We still haven't gotten into that dark stuff yet, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm really like, come on already. This still seems quite light on the level of uh, the pathway we can talk about here. He think he's like, <laughs> he's smiling at me in a way like he knows, he knows but he's not going to change for me. <laughs> he's going to share his message no matter what Abby says or Abby does. He's going to share his message. It's funny. Okay. Hmm. So laughter is another way that we can overcome negativity. <sighs> Bring the happiness back into yourself. Bring the positive energy back into you. Bring all of yourselves from the weird um, hallway and the filing cabinets of that place. <laughs> Bring all those parts of you back to the central location and be that laughter inside yourself, that harmony, that joy, the smile. And let that negativity just change the word from negativity to oh wow healing needs to take place here that's something i can heal or that is something i cannot heal and that negative comment or negative thing 
it's not negative. It's just opportunity for healing. That person needs to work on healing themselves. That situation needs healing. You know, so we're supposed to look at it in this way is going to help. Okay, now he's taking me to a, it's like a fireman's pole. He says, I don't know why you s insist on going down here, Abby. Why do you insist on going down to these really dark places? What are you looking for down there? What do you think you're going to find? It's so, sort of like using the, you know, if you put, you know, if you put your nose in the dirt, you're going to get dirty kind of thing. Like, um, so if you go down into the dark, all you're going to find down there is darkness. So what inspires the soul then to go look for something in the dark? What are they going to find there but darkness? But I tell him that darkness is also me, so I'm only going to find more of myself. More of myself that I long to comprehend in a humanistic way. Through my human emotions, to be challenged by it. To overcome it, to learn from it. Even to fear it. To become a victim of it. To learn empowerment and strength and understanding, patience, unconditional love. So Kryon says, so you're telling me then going down this fireman's pole into the depths of darkness is going to teach you unconditional love. <clears throat> he says you can't find, you can't learn unconditional love in the light. He shows me that a lot of this conversation, once I left that filing cabinet place, I didn't realize this, but we were standing on a bright sunny uh, slope of a mountain and it was covered in beautiful grasses and flowers. And then we had our wheelbarrows and things and we were dumping the rocks out in this beautiful sunny day and everything feels quite lighthearted and good. Even the negativity that is surrounding us, we're still on like a bright sunny like mountainside. And we're just like, oh, that's those wounds, that, that's their wounds. They, they need love. That, that's something they need to work on. And it's allowing that energy to go back because we're choosing to say no to it. And we're choosing only to bring back into ourself love, right? So we're not going to eat poison, so why do we need to eat energetic poison, you know? So we just put that poison and we just see it as an opportunity for someone else to heal themselves or whatever. Now we're in this dark place. And so he's showing me, so I couldn't learn unconditional love on the, the happy sunny mountain slope. <laughs> I could only learn it by going down this dark pole. I say you can only it's like, how do I want to put this? It's like traveling. If you, you know, if you want to go to France, you can learn how to speak French. You don't go to China in order to learn how to speak French, right? So um, if you want to go to the sunny mountain slope, you're going to learn parts of that energetic culture. Um, of the sunny mountain slope experience and the release of the heavy rocks or um, the ability to bring it back into yourself to find balance and peace. Um, but you're going to, when you travel down the darker path, you're going to um, learn a different culture, a different way of being, you're going to discover a different reflection within yourself. And we're everything. We're sunny mountain slopes. We're frigid, cold mountain slopes. We're we're awesome, attractive beaches, we're some ucky, mucky swamps, we're, we're literally everything, and we are dark things, too. And Kryon gives me a big hug, and he gives you a big hug, gives everybody a big hug, because it's really hard to understand that we can, that we can be dark things, too, especially those of us who work so hard at being good things, angelic things, even angels have dark sides because we're part of that too. We're part of that too. <sighs> he 
he starts to cry and he knows it's time now for me to go down the pole because my divine time is calling me. And this filing cabinet is no filing cabinet. It goes way deeper and way darker than that dimensional plane. You can't even see me anymore. I'm pretty much swallowed up by the darkness itself. And I become a part of all the particles of this frequency. It's really disturbing in here. And when you learn how to adjust to this light, you start to see so many lost souls. You start to see souls that have become very twisted and disturbing and can't remember what, what they were before they went down that fireman's pole. Every soul down here had a divine time to comprehend themselves in this dark space. And he says, some souls, cry and says, <clears throat> Some souls go to these places in order to help the souls that are down here, not just to discover themselves, but to help other souls too. He is wondering from all of you watching what, okay, how do I want to put this? <clears throat> this dark space exists everywhere. So whether you're on Earth or some other planet or some star or some other universe that is nothing like we could ever fathom a universe being, maybe it's just like the color yellow and who knows what's going on there, but it goes on and on and on forever. Everywhere in an infinite universe, this dark space exists. So Earth, this dark space exists. And what, what do you think from this Earth experience has collected in this dark space? What what have we gifted of our own souls to this dark space? And if we were to try to see what earth has, what this earth experience has given to this dark space, what, what would we be seeing there? And you have to remember every single soul that ever entered into this dark space entered it from angelic realms, entered it from the highest realms of the highest realms, because we're, explorers, we're adventurers of our own essence, of our own frequencies, of our own divinities. So we are all angels that got lost in the dark. So there's those of us too that come, the light workers, whatever you want to call them, that come in order to try to help our soul friends. We're all soulmates. And some of us can't figure it out. We totally lost. And some of us are trying to remember and we get glimpses of it. And others of us, we're remembering and we're doing as best as we can to bring those memories back to our friends to help them see again themselves and to help them get back to the sunny mountainside to let go of their rocks and burdens to understand that negativity is not who and what they are. It's just an experience. Then we could perceive that as an opportunity for healing, not negativity. We could see it as a good opportunity for healing. So there's no such thing as negativity. There's just opportunity for healing. Um, this place makes Cryon very sad, and he has many tears. And he has a tear for every single one of these souls, and the tears that he cries... Um, it's like pure love, and he hopes that each one of his tears will somehow reach the heart of each soul in this dark place. And it's interesting because in my journey with Cryon, he, Cryon has been a huge part of my life. And I, I interpret Cryon, I experience Cryon as a beautiful masculine energy. But to somebody else, Kryon could be a female energy. To somebody else, Kryon is like 800 minds working as one mind. It's just whatever your soul interprets that in consciousness as. That's my interpretation of Kryon's consciousness. And Kryon came as an extraordinary being of pure love. And I didn't know Kryon until I happened to watch uh, a Lee Carroll YouTube video and I just listened to like 10 minutes of it but something moved me when I heard this message it, it like literally freaked me out in a like an extraordinary way on the inside like what the 
the heck is this? And I was like, like a bit sh sh on the shaky side because it was just so hardcore. Like the frequencies of it were so powerful to me. And I could not release myself from the meaning of whatever that was. And that evening, Kryon came and I talked to him and I, it was like a re rekindling like an awesome friendship that had been so long kind of thing. And Kryon has helped me through ridiculous like challenges in my life. I met Kryon back in 2015 and I've been through so much since then. So somehow Kryon's tear of love reached me. And I think there's other people out there that would agree that Kryon's tear of love has reached them too. And he's so, he's really dedicated to helping Earth. He's really dedicated. And uh, he's never, whenever I needed him, he's always been there. Like, I, <laughs> I can count on him. I don't feel like I can count on literally anything except cry on. <laughs> I can't even count on myself. Like I can't count on anything. <laughs> I can count on crying. That's kind of cool to say that. But he shows me that um, he cares about every soul. He cares about every single one of us. And he really longs to see the souls return so that he can embrace each one with love, like personalized love specifically for that soul, every single soul uniquely to share a unique and personalized experience with each soul. And it's just pure love. And it's special because he makes you feel special because he personalizes the experience with you to help you to remember the way home is what it's like. He says, so how do we, what do we do about this place, this dark place? Because it's, it's connected to all of us really, because we're all connected to each other, but we all have memories and connections with this place. Parts of us from some lifetimes we can't even remember are still there. Fragmented parts. We got so many fragments. What do we do about this place? Do we just forget about it? Do we just leave it? Can we just stay on the mountain slope, the pretty mountain slope, and just forget about that? Or does that need to be cleaned up? Is that... It, <laughs> he shows me uh, super clean people <laughs> that are very familiar to me. <laughs> I know those faces. <laughs> Where I'm just like, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. They'd be like, what? No, you are not going to leave that mess there. That mess is only going to get worse. That mess needs to be cleaned up right now. <laughs> So we got to be that way for this dark place. You don't get to wait and do your dishes two weeks from now. You have to do them right now. Otherwise, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> but it's way worse than dishes. It's like really bad. <laughs> but we can do it, right? We can do it. <sighs> so what are we going to do? How do we clean up this mess? I mean, he shows it to me like this. We need to clean this up. It's like a... A leak in the roof does not get better. It only gets worse. It has to be fixed. Um, an issue with the car, like it doesn't get better. It has to be fixed. Otherwise, it gets worse. So we need to really look at this and figure out what can we do to get this fixed. I mean, he's really showing me like clean up the mess, get it fixed. He's showing it to me in this way. And I say, well, we first have to care about this place. We have to see the importance of this place and our relationship with this place and why this place exists in the first place. What is this place? What, you know, what is its purpose? You know, all that stuff. Once we come into an awareness of that, now we can start to actually care about it because it's basically a baby that was thrown in the dumpster and forgotten about. That's what that dark place is. It matters. It ridiculously matters. It's like Lucifer, let's just let that guy rot for all eternity. Lucifer matters. 
every single one of us matters. Every single one. The cockroaches matter. The bud bugs matter. As much as I can't stand it, <laughs> they also matter. But we need to see it as an opportunity to care and to love. And now, when we choose to care, that caring is received in that place. Just like Cryon's tears, the, just simply caring about that place, now that place can receive the love that it has been, that has been withheld from that place. Now the love can reach it. And as we, as a collective, can start to care about that place, that place receives more and more love and everybody on our entire planet heals. And the re extreme sufferings that sensitive people go through, very energetically sensitive people, empathetic people, psychic people go through extreme sensitivities when it comes to feeling the suffering of our earth and our collective. Depressions, self-punishment, um, withdraw from society you know there's so much happening here and it's the pain of that dark space it's the pain that we all carry we carry the burdens for each other we have to start caring about healing that as a collective crayon is already on board he says <laughs> he's already on board but he shows me that he he sends his love into this space, but he can't. He doesn't go in there. He sends his love into the space. He doesn't ever show me going down the fireman's pole. It is not for him. However, his love is is can be found anywhere you look. There, his love can be, and that's how you can find him. Is just to simply look for his love, but he keeps his consciousness high, vibrationally high. It's, he keeps just simply saying it's not for him to go down there. That's all he's saying. It is for us, though. We are the ones choosing to go down there. Man, he shows me some really disturbing pockets, like even deeper than this depth. It's really jacked up stuff down here. Everybody's own sick, weird, demented dream. Every sick, twisted, weird idea. I mean, it's messed up, weird, just sick stuff down here. I don't understand it, Cryon. I mean, I'm looking at a weird room, and this is just one of bajillions of rooms. In this weird room, there's a girl who is a doll without any eyes. And she has is having tea, but there's no tea in her cup. All the while, there's a child that's literally like on a hook and um, roped up around the neck that's choking. It's just an everyday. Is it just a normal day? That's one of these sick rooms down here. There's infinite weird rooms down here. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. I mean, there's a man, there's another room that everything is upside down and the man is stuck to the ceiling and he can't figure out the floor from the ceiling, but he can't even move either because he's that glued stuck. And there's something weird about red paint that, I mean, he's like naked and there's red um, streaks of paint upon him and he just like mumbling mumbo jumbo. It just doesn't make any sense, you know? So much weird, nonsensical, sick, twisted stuff. But Crying shows me how these weird frequencies get into our movies and they get into... I mean, he's... <laughs> I, I know about what kids watch on YouTube. I know what's out there. But uh, some of these stories like uh, FNAF, The Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, this is this is the weird, um, the weird, twisted, dark places that we're learning from, and our kids are learning about it at a young age. There's reasons for everything, because these places have to be vented. These places are getting rancid. They have to be vented somehow. They have to be healed through us, through us. It's essential. Otherwise, it never heals. Mm. 
it just keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. It's almost like, uh, God, it's just, how much deeper does it go? And I'm starting to understand why Crying was like, are you sure you want to go down there? Because we can hang out on this sunny hillside. Because I feel like I can't get out of this now. Like, it's just like the next stairwell and the next weird, creepy room and the next thing. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper forever. And it's like you can't get unstuck from all this weird stuff. And you can't find your way back to the sunny mountainside. Because now you become like kind of intoxicated by this messed up energy. And it becomes you. And you become it. And you become kind of disturbed by it. And all you want is to just experience the sunny hillside again. All I gotta do is dump the rocks. Okay, <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> just, just take me back there. Great. <laughs> Hmm. He shows me how my soul goes into the dark, and it went into the dark for a very long time. My soul personally did. And it went down a spiral, and it got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, and then it got stuck. What is like uh, the very bottom of the coil before it um, goes the opposite way and becomes big again? It's like uh, going down only to go upward. It's, uh, it's like that. And he shows I get to like the vortex or whatever of the opposing now spiral. And I got lodged there. And um, a as I got lodged there, all this energy that was spiraling down was spiraling then through me and then spiraling out from me as well. And I ke became the center of a dark universe. He's saying that about my own soul journey. And when I became the center of a dark universe, it, all I could say is my soul ripped apart into many pieces and became many universes. And how is one soul to find itself again after an event of this kind? So now you have a single human being who is relapsing what is incomprehensible to a human mind based on a soul journey, which is all about energy. And he feels sad about these events. And he says there's human beings still trying to reconcile those dark journeys. Reconcile the soul fragments. Reconcile the splitting and ripping apart of their souls. The scattering. I say, man crying, it seems kind of uh, like hopeless or helpless. <laughs> I mean, now I get you. Why do we go down the dark, <laughs> fireman? <laughs> well, it seemed like a good idea, right? <laughs> to find myself or to destroy myself? Which one? Or is it both? Hmm. He shows me another version of time. <sighs> this is long, long, long after that event what we would describe as a very long time after that event. And all the parts of me actually are incarnated as like 10 different people. And these 10 people um, are standing in a circle and they're all look looking, they're, they're holding each other's hands. So they're all connected. These are all my souls in an incarnate state and they're male and females. And they're looking at um, across from each other and they're sort of looking into each other's eyes. And it's just like a, there seems to be, um, I look into the eyes of the one across me looking into the eyes of somebody over there and then it just seems to be going like uh, bouncing off um, eyes to eyes to eyes to eyes to eyes and, uh, forever. And then I see these what would be like 10 beings, uh, males and females, um, start to turn to light and a huge orb, they become a part of one humongous orb. And I realized that the soul was always meant to be this. What seemed like a really awful event um, was actually as it was intended to be. Because the soul was meant to be these many beings. But it was also meant to be the merging of the many beings back into itself. And everything feels so much better. Everything feels like the water is washing over us and cleansing us and purifying us. 
we need to let the darkness go. It's like we need to let the darkness, it's like he shows me when the water washes the dirt off. I've come to peace with the dirt and now I'm ready to be cleaned. Mm. Everything is becoming silent and peaceful and I experience cryon meditating in a very high space and it's dark and it has sort of gold, brownish golden outline of himself in this dark place and he's just in a continual state of meditation but I see he is projected into many versions of himself all over what would be the idea of many universes and realities and incarnations and it's just like, uh, it's like everything is already known. Everything is already known, so what more do you need to know? Because it is already known. And if you can acknowledge that inside yourself, that everything is already known, then there's nothing else left. just this which is like silence pristine silence and a knowing so there you go <laughs> now we know Cryon's perspective on this question <laughs> it's kind of interesting how I made this video and there's blinding sunlight and seem to be normal light and now it's getting really dark <clears throat> it's like artistic it's an artistic video because it's got um the emotion of light and um, darkness entering into the video in its own divine time <laughs> i don't get to control it it just decides and then i experience it <laughs> it's part of the message all right I really like Cryon, and I'm not sure why I don't channel him more often. Maybe because I want to just allow that that message from Cryon to be channeled by Lee Carroll or people who specifically channel Cryon. <laughs> I can totally channel Cryon too. I think he's fantastic, and I love him very much. I think what he has to share is wise and meaningful, and it touches my heart. Okay, everybody. Thank you for watching. It, you've made it to 50 minutes. You've watched my video for 50 minutes. That's incredible that you dedicated 15 minutes of your time to this message, to the discovery of this. That's powerful. Thank you very much <laughs> for joining me on this journey. If any of you are interested in connecting with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Okay, everybody, thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. <laughs>